together so that it makes sense for you. I'm Forbes Markets Editor John Dobus. Here's a chart of the SPY. It's an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 stock index. And as you can see, it's at a high for the year. Not only is it at a high for the year, it's at a high since 2008. That's before the financial crisis. And we are just steaming higher. Skepticism is kind of waning. People are so optimistic. They're feeling stoked, like Jeff Spicoli in the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Of course, a lot of wisdom in that movie. Jeff, uh, to paraphrase him, all I need is some tasty econ numbers, some sideline cash, and I'm fine. Well, you know, you could have been fine just taking a little stumble out of the bus and buying stocks for the last four months, and they've gone a lot higher. Check this out right here. Moving from about uh, 120 to 140, a nice little move since the start of the year. This is like uh, Christmas time right here. But could there be some trouble on the horizon? Well, the volume, the volume, looking at the volume bars right here, not as high on average as they were going into the end of last year. So there's a little bit of a lack of conviction, if you will. Not a lot of voters showed up to the polls, if you will, here on this up move. So it's a little bit suspect. And there's another way you can uh, have a little bit of skepticism for the market if you go into Elliott Wave Analysis. What in the heck is that? Elliott Wave Analysis named not for the little kid in E.T., but for Ralph Nelson Elliott. He uh, looked at stock market and a lot of different social patterns and found that trends move in a five-wave primary pattern. One, and you correct off of it for wave two, wave three is forward, wave four is down, wave five, then you correct down two. People, uh, technical analysts, apply this to the stock market. And so you have pretty clearly here from March 2009, a long-term bottom, a big move up, a correction, a big move up, a correction, and now we're in that final last fifth wave higher. The tricky thing is, of course, that these waves, you never know how high they'll go. Ramki Rami Krishnan, he's on the Great Speculations blog here at Forbes. He had a piece called uh, Elliott Waves Warn of Climax Coming in the S&P 500 Index. We're here at about 1,400 on the S&P right now. We could go as high as 1,475. That's a pretty chunky move to miss if you do miss it. But he's saying that the primary move which is bullish, wants to correct, needs to correct the excesses before it can go higher, which could take it down to where it was before the start of the year. Something to think about. One little thing to check out, Elliott Waves can, this is a prosperity and depression, prosperity and depression. This is going back to 1700. So this is kind of the, the way that human psychology in the aggregate tends to work. And where else would you find that expressed better than in financial markets? Well, one thing that has caused a little bit of pain is this 10-year yield, the, the yield on the 10-year Treasury note. It's gone higher from below 2% on March 12th, closing out the week close to 2.3%. Big move higher in the primary and the benchmark interest rate here for the uh, United States. What does this mean? Uh, the TLT, that's an ETF that holds 20-plus year maturity bonds that are issued by the government, fell lower out of its little consolidation pattern right here, a chart from uh, our friend Cy Harding at Street Smart Report, also a great speculations contributor. Uh, how can you make some money off this big move higher for interest rates, which means a lower move for bonds? Become a bond bear. There's a couple ETFs you could use right here. One is the TVT. That goes two times the opposite of the TLT. Get it? So when bonds get weak, this thing really goes up high. Check it out. It's like a Loch Ness Monster head right there. Well, TBT, same idea, but it's just one-time leverage in the opposite direction of the TLT. So you can hedge your exposure to bonds and you can actually make some money. Been some real savage slaughters, kind of like a night on the town with this fellow. Of course, that's Frank from the movie Blue Velvet, played by Dennis Hopper, a guy who um, wasn't afraid to hit the nitrous. And municipal bonds, look at this, this is the MUB. It's an ETF that holds municipal bonds. And it's just been slaughtered for the last three weeks as rates have crept higher. So far, this hasn't been bad for stocks, you know. Uh, oh, corporate bonds, they've gone home crying. Here's a, this is the LQD, it's corporate bond index, come down from 117 to 114, yield isn't that great. Where you could find some opportunity are the places where guys like Fred Sanford and his son Lamont looked in Sanford and Son, great open, I love, love the truck directed by Bud Yorkin. It's the big one, baby, it's the big one. The yields are going higher. Well, hey, they're still yield products, you know? They still will go down if, the, if these yields go much higher, but junk bonds have a little bit more room, a little more wiggle room. You're getting about 7.4% 7, 4, 7 yield in these suckers. They haven't gone down as much. You got your choice here, the JNK, or you've got the HYG. Both are uh, ETFs that track the index. But remember Mike Damone, going back to Ridgemont High? Hey, there's still yield products, and when rates go high, you're going to get hurt. That's my Mike Damone impression for the day. Sorry about that. Utility stocks, another place where you are getting the yield products. 4.1%, 4.05% yield. 
it's kind of powered out a little bit right there. You could say, oh, value, utility, I'll buy it. Okay, fine, but maybe go a little more specific. Go for something like, go the Dukes. No, no, not these Dukes. That's the cast of the Dukes of Hazard, the TV edition, of course. No, no, not this Duke either. Coach K with uh, oh, Duke Blue Devils. Four, yes, 4%, Coach K. So Duke Energy, you're getting yourself a 4.7% yield. You know, we only yield products, they're going to get hooked. But 4.7%, if you don't care for the next 20 years, who gives a crap? Buy it. Uh, MLPs, I feel this pain myself. MLPs are getting whacked with higher yields. Uh, this one right here is the AMLP. It's an ETF that tracks kind of a bunch of them, about 20 different funds. Uh, EPD, look at EPD if you want to get a little yield. 4.9%. It has not come down to the 50-day average. Uh, I do have this sucker right here, Sunoco Logistics. I'm just looking at it going every day. God, it's going down. Uh, down to 3681 It was up to 42 bucks. That's about a 12% correction, folks, and uh, below the 50-day average. And uh, I need to sell it. Um, banks, the stress test came out kind of in different stages, kind of leaked out and given out officially by the Federal Reserve. And uh, this is the XLF, the financial stocks. Moving higher. Nice little breakout. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Dimon, baby. He's paying a fat dividend. He jumped the Fed, said he passed the stress test. Uh, they're in good shape. JP Morgan, Chase, looking like a great stock at 44 bucks. Who would have touched it at 30 though, right? Oh, and the Muppet stock, of course. Uh, you know, the guy, Greg Smith, quit in London saying Goldman Sachs was saying mean things about their clients, including calling them Muppets. Um, despite the Muppet commentary, Goldman Sachs doing just fine. Yeah, they, they, were, they sold off on the day of that op-ed in the New York Times, but uh, They've come back with the sector. They Even City, which didn't pass the stress test, is rallying. So take your pick, jump in, use a stop loss, because when these markets turn, you could get pinched, and that might just happen come May.